You cut it yourself or a barber did that? Let me tell you, I should have cut my hair myself because I was in Europe. So you paid a nigga to do that? No, he know what he's doing, so he get real slick with it. He get you high, get you drunk, you taking shots all day. Drink chest, motherfucking Drink chest, podcast. Motherfucker. Make some noise! They clapping all day. Let's take a shot for that. They clapping, you taking shots. You get real truthful. He got the game called Quick Time with Slime, where he puts two people up or two situations up to whether it's two people you love, two people you don't like, or one person you like and one person you don't like. Either way, if you don't answer, you gotta take a shot. Eve or Missy? Take a shot, girl. Ah! A podcast usually features a recurring host, one or two, maybe three, and they talk about a current event or a hot topic at the time. When it comes to doing a podcast, the content can go from a range. Sometimes you can see it's carefully scripted because you don't want to offend nobody, you don't want to get canceled. And other times it's completely improvised. And usually the completely improvised podcasts are the most entertaining. Podcasts are pretty easy to start. Anybody can start a podcast, which is pretty much a radio show, which a lot of us wanted to do as kids. In September of 2000, a popular MP3 player manufacturer offered a service called My Audio To Go, which allowed users to download audio for news stories to listen on a PC or MP3 player. Unlike a radio broadcast, which is always live, you can replay your downloaded episode whenever you like. Um, stop it, fast forward, rewind. In August 2004, Adam Curry launched his show Daily Source Code. It was a show pretty much recording his everyday life and talking about the development of podcasting. So in 2005, when the fifth generation iPod came out, they had a podcast app on there. None of us clicked on it because we didn't know what the hell it was. Leading up to 2007, Podcast was used for like training purposes for like for your job. Then it transitioned to a radio type of format to where people would come and do interviews and press runs through podcasts. Podcast wasn't visual at the time like it is now. It was more like a recorded radio show. So when this shift started happening, it was around the time when the internet started growing as far as technology started advancing and consumer access was growing. Now you got podcasts for all kinds of shit. You got Live podcasts, you got novels, you got fiction podcasts, you got sports podcasts, which is my favorite, you got crime solving podcasts, you got relationship advice podcasts. Even though Uptown Alley Fashion is not a podcast, podcasts are the reason we here. I remember the Comeback Jack show. In August of 2010, Comeback Jack launched a podcast by the same name. The internet radio show was dedicated to hip hop discussions and interviews. In 2013, the show became a flagship of the Loudspeaker Network. And a lot of people still wasn't catching on to the podcast wave yet. It wasn't until tax season. This is when it all started to make sense. In January of 2015, Tax Stone appeared on an episode of Brilliant Idiots with Charlemagne and Andrew Schultz. So Comeback Jack and Chris Morrow, seeing this episode Tax Stone was on, they figured he was so outspoken, a New York street dude, he can have his own show. This was started Tax Season, Tax Stone's Tax Season. He released his first episode of Tax Season, March of 2015, just four months after he was recommended to the network. So Tax Stone, wasn't your average podcaster because podcasters didn't come from a street perspective. This guy was a known street New York dude, put in a lot of work, and he stood behind what he said, which ultimately got him in the situation he's in now, but we'll talk about that later. Tax Stone had the likes of Beanie Siegel on his show. He had Meek Mill on his show during the him and Drake beef. After the Drake dissed him, Meek went to Tax Stone to talk to him first. Then you had Gilly the Kid on there, who also started his million dollar worth of the game podcast with his cousin Wallow, who just came home from jail. Tax Stone was the bridge of the gap to what we see in a lot of podcasts today. Joe Budden was on tax season. The episode wasn't too long. Joe was being a little weird. Tax asked him about an upcoming album. I believe he had a slaughterhouse deal on the Eminem at the time. Tax asked him about the album. Joe kind of gave him a weird stare. It's on, it's on, it's on camera, it's on, it's on video. And Tax got frustrated because he was felt like he was botching his episode, botching his interview, and he crooked off on him. What the fuck is wrong with this nigga, son? Joe was on a walk-off tour at that time. Like Joe was just going on different platforms and being a weirdo and, and walking off. Like I, I didn't understand it either. But lo and behold, I feel like Joe was just going around soaking up game from all these platforms because he got his own show and it's pretty big right now. Joe and his original co-host in Maul and Roy was a hit. Like, 
It got to the point to where Joe's opinion started to matter throughout the whole industry, throughout the whole culture. People would snap back on Joe, they snap back at Roy, snap back at Maul, and these are all people with industry ties. Like Maul is the little brother of Kareem Burks, who founded Rockefeller. Rory is like a and r for Def Jam, or was an A&R for Def Jam behind the scenes. And you know Joe used to rap, so these were his friends. Their opinions started to affect a lot of people in the industry. Joe, Maul, and Rory, then they fall out over contract disputes and money. Of course, it always happens that way. Joe reloads his team, he got Queens Flip, he got Parks, he got Ish, and he got Ice. And Melissa Ford. Also, in the podcast world, you got battle rapper Math Hoffa. Math Hoffa was a well-known battle rapper in that community. Was on Smack, you got real, was on RBE, he had a couple good battles. He was most known for punching the guy, and he got punched by a battle rapper named Disaster. He ended up starting his own podcast, which is my favorite to this day my expert opinion. His podcast really gets to the nitty gritty of the culture. He didn't have Jazz O, Jay-Z's former rap partner. He didn't have 21 Savage on there. He didn't have Ja Rule on there. And when these guys comes on Mav Show, he knows how to ask the right questions to get them to be transparent. It ain't too much fluff in there. It ain't too much politi political correctness, if you, if, if you know what I mean. Brother Rizza Islam's on there. You got Method Man. You got other battle rappers that came on. K Shine. You done had Boosie on there, DJ Vlad on there multiple times. Yeah, yo, and Uncle Murder. They, when people come on, the reason why it's significant when they come in that barbershop, they they don't they talking like they're not being recorded. They say anything. They don't really incriminate themselves because he don't let them do that. And he probably edited it out because Math is being a good dude with that. But they come on there and they do their thing. Math is not the only guy that can get to your transparent side. Drink Champs and Nori probably do it the best out of all of them. Nori done got Irv Gotti on there twice, talking crazy. He done told people he was in love with Ashanti and was mad at Nelly because he seen him at a game where Derrick Rose and it was playing. And he done told people that Dame needed Jay, Jay ain't need Dame, and all this craziness. He, Irv was going crazy on Drink Champs. Keep Irv away from Drink Champs. Kanye. You cut it yourself or Barbara did that? Let me tell you, I should have cut my hair myself because I was in Europe. So you paid a nigga to do that? No, he know what he's doing, so he get real slick with it. He get you high, get you drunk, you taking shots all day. Drink Champs, motherfucker. Drink Champs, Make some noise! They clapping all day. Let's take a shot for that. They clapping, you taking shots. You get real truthful. He got the game called Quick Time with Slime where he put two people up or two situations up so whether it's two people you love, two people you don't like, or one person you like and one person you don't like. Either way, if you don't answer, you gotta take a shot. Eve or Missy? Take a shot, girl. If you do answer, he's still getting something out of you with that. Brilliant idea. The million dollars worth of game, Gilly and Wallow. I follow them just as much as I follow the other podcasts. Gilly, one of the funniest. He might be one of my uncles or my older cousin. Wallow the same. They got a pure relationship. If you grew up in any type of inner city, you ran into these guys before. You know who these guys are. You're familiar with them. The culture needed this. Gilly and Wado, their personalities, and they put and they promoting a positive image to the youth, promoting a positive message. Wado did 20 years in jail. Came home with Gil. They had a plan. They stuck to it. They executed it. And look what they at now. They got people begging to come on their show. But I'm pretty sure before they probably was like, look, they probably was trying to get handouts, not handouts, trying to get favors to people to come on. Now they in the place to where people are begging to come on their platform to even get their story out or get whatever they need to get out, get some promotion out. One thing they do is promote positivity. And they get to the bottom of anything. If you're going through some shit, if you're going under, under any type of cancel, you know how the cancel culture gets you, people come on, million dollars worth of game, and they clear their name. That's what I love about them brothers. Keep up the good work, it's still ongoing. All these podcasts are still ongoing besides tax season. They still ongoing, but I will highlight that Tax Stone kinda was the, was, the, was the foundation for what we have now. What's going on my Upside Out Eyes? To celebrate us coming up on 1,000 subscribers, we're doing another giveaway. So 500 views. If you are a subscriber or subscribe and you hashtag UPCAF in the comments, after we get to 500 views, we're gonna go through the list, randomly pick a guy or girl, and, excuse the bag, y'all, we are giving away Jordan 1 slippers. Again, do not wear these outside your house unless you want a quick urn. They fly in the house. You're gonna get cooked if you wear them outside the house. And we also got 
the pink Yeezy slippers that we giving away for free. All, one size fits all, of course. You can be a motherfucker with a size 11 or size 12. You can put these on. They slippers. They fit the size. Hashtag UBCAF. Let's get it. The biggest podcast in the world right now is the Joe Rogan Experience. Joe Rogan was always a great host for shows. Like I said, he did Fear Factor. That's probably was his biggest show. Joe Rogan started his podcast and he has any and anybody come on. He didn't have Dave Chappelle, he didn't have Kevin Hart. He didn't have Mike Tyson who has his own podcast also. He didn't have Neil deGrasse Tyson. He talks about everything from relationships to aliens, the parallel universe, to Bigfoot, all the conspiracy theory things you can think of, all the conspiracies out there, he have somebody come on the show and talk about it and make sense of it. Joe Rogan podcast is probably the most wide range of content you gonna get out of the podcast. Then you got your Manosphere, Red Pill kind of podcast. This is where the Kevin Samuels- So if I wanted a high value man, what do I do? Be reincarnated. The fresh and fit guys. First of all, before we get past that rest in peace to kevin samuels i think he got a bad reputation a misreputation people thought he was real hard on black women or just women period but he was hard on the fellas too see the uh, problem is when you say this you weaken us you sound soft saying this shit see, he was telling fellas if you ain't making more if you ain't making six figures you don't deserve to date nobody but he was also telling women if you <laughs> weigh a certain amount of weight you need to lose weight or find you a bum and take care of him or you and you need to stop making some he was definitely very he was an acquired taste he was very abrasive with his message but he meant well rest in peace kevin samuel now these fresh and fit guys they tried to take the kevin samuel approach except for they were just really just being bammers like they was just talking crazy about women and if you look at these jokers, you can tell they ain't no, I'm not taking no advice from them. Look at them, y'all. They wasn't getting no women before they even had a podcast. Why would, why would anybody listen to them? Why would women listen to them? Then we got guys like Andrew Tate, who's currently incarcerated. He want that natural order of things again, but people don't know how to take it because everybody got a sense of power, and which you should. Everybody should feel high, highly about themselves, especially women and all that. He just got a very old school way of looking at things which I kind of agree with him. I don't 100 percent agree with nobody, but a lot of things he's saying is definitely good for society. I ain't gonna say free Andrew Tate because I don't know if his allegations against him are true, but keep your head up, brother, that's all I can say. Then you got Melody King, who's like the female version of Kevin Samuel. She's a very beautiful woman. She has a very unpopular opinion from the female's perspective. And she's doing her thing also. Then you got my girl, Mona. Don't call me white girl. That's one of my favorite podcasts. He's a shorty, he's off the hook. Shout out to Mona. She got a very dark comedy type of situation. She got a dark sense of humor. And it's kind of, it's funny to me, but you know, some people, it's a quiet taste. Some people might cringe at a sub of her stuff, but shout out to Mona. And shout out to my girl, Kendra G, who got like a dating show where she goes on live with people and they pretty much, it's like a, interactive myspace back in the day or interactive dating app like she pretty much get people to come on and talk tell you their situation how much they make what they looking for in a partner and what they got going on for themselves shout out to kendra g for what you're doing that's a great show also we i'm an avid watcher i always watch it but in the sports world podcast going crazy a lot of these athletes right now are getting smart control to getting in front of everything control the narrative they call it new media you got travis and jason kelsey got a crazy podcast gilbert arenas got a crazy podcast draymond green be in season just like the kelsey brothers with his podcast it goes crazy i think michael parsons got a podcast patrick beverly got a podcast jj reddick has a very good podcast was talking very intelligent basketball um, we are big fans of that upset only fashion also also want to give a special shout out to hip hop uncensored podcast the sports world is crazy you got cam and mace cam and my top 10 favorite rappers mace was my dude for one point they got a crazy sports podcast which is just raw and gritty it's literally the same type of sports fellas usually talk about off camera they just on camera talking about it and they can talk about it because they cam and mace like they said you can't even cancel them because Shit, they canceled themselves. Man, they got they got jokers like, first of all, OJ Simpson is a co-host, y'all. How crazy is that? OJ Simpson, Maurice Corrette, uh, 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 you got, uh, uh, what's my man, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown. 
AB, they bring in all the controversial athletes to bring in their inputs on the current current sports world and current situations. And we also got the comedy world with the Comedy Hype channel, which is a podcast hosted by Pierre. You've seen Pierre and How to Be a Player. You've just seen him on BT Comic View. He got a whole Comedy Hype channel, which he hosts. That's a great podcast. They talk about all the behind the scenes drama with different comedians or what they got upcoming. You got the 5150 show with Corey Holcomb. And he, and he, Corey Hogan, y'all know how Corey Hogan roll. He go in. I'm a fan. He's also an acquired taste because he keep it too real with y'all. Then you also got the 85 South Show. But they like my brothers I never met. The Chico Bean, shout out DMV, well, DC specifically. Chico Bean, DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller. All those jokers are straight killers in the comedy game. I went to go see them when they came here on tour. Those are my dogs. I look at every show, every, the Rick Ross episode was crazy. Let me use the restroom one time and I'm gonna take this jacket off. Team went to the bathroom, never came back. That was wild. We ain't get no doubt. Why not? <laughs> but them jokers doing their thing. I'll tell you one thing. From now on, that's how the fuck I'm leaving. Then you got my boy Funny Marco. Funny Marco does his dry human interviews, which be hilarious. They took the chops and white jump down. That probably was the funniest one. If y'all ever can find that anywhere, Find that Charles and White interview. The Carlos Miller one was good too. That's still on there. The uh the Suki, Sukiana. His interview with Sukiana was very good. That's on there too. It was hilarious. Then you got Bobby Altov. That's how y'all say her name. I think Bobby Altov. No disrespect to Shorty, but she blew up off of Funny Marco's formula. Like he's better at it than her. But she got big off of it. I ain't gonna say why. We ain't gonna put a race car. But she's not as good as Funny Marco. She already in, at at odds with Drake and Yachty. And Offset just came on her show. Your team reached out to mine. Don't cap. Pretty much shut. You know, kind of, kind of outdid her on at her own shit on her show. C A P. Flag on the play. <sighs> cap. Shout out to Offset for that. <laughs> but shout out to Bobby too. We ain't gonna do you like that. But we know. Where you got your shit from. So we come to the point to say podcasts have become so universal. Whatever type of person you whatever your interests are, they could, there's a podcast on porn. Like if you have a porn addiction, there's, I'm pretty sure it's a podcast for that. I don't know, but it's a podcast. But your favorite sports team is a million guys to have a podcast for your favorite sports team in any sport. So podcast is here. I feel like it's gonna be here forever because it's something people can tune into. It's like you control your own content. The content is you can control yourself because you can go see. It ain't like back in the day, you had to just watch what was promoted to you. You can go seek out what you want to see now because there's a podcast for everything. Slack time. My Uptown allies, y'all know what time it is. Slack time. Subscribe, like, and comment. Hit that notification bell. Hashtag UPTAF. Let's get it.